Well, yeah. I mean, first off, I love to hear people's story, right? Like, so, you know, what'd you do? Let me, let me ask you, what'd you do before real estate? That'd be interesting to hear the beginning stages of, you know, your working career, you know, what, what were you doing? And then what made you get into kind of real estate? Let Was me that before Chippendales? No, no. <laughs> oh, okay. No, I did that free, but anyway. Uh, no, so it's, let me fast forward you from like the dream until how I got to where I was really quick. Yeah. High school, I wanted to be a real estate agent. Um, whatever reason, didn't do that. Uh, 9-11 hit, not 9-11, the first Iraq war hit. Uh, when they invaded, I was going to be a hero, joined the army. By the time I got out of basic training, the war was over and I was still in the army, which I was not happy because I just got to clean motor pools the rest of my time. Um, got out of the army, went in uh, prison guard, was a prison guard for two years, broken ankle there, was out for convalescent leave. My dad kind of said, you know what, prison work's probably not the thing for you. And so I got into insurance sales, did that for a couple of years, went from insurance sales to copier sales, did that for a couple of years. Then I went to car sales, did that for a couple of years, and then ended up at Circuit City. <laughs> Circuit City. Remember yep. Circuit City? I knew, this building was a Circuit City building. Oh, that's right. It was, really? yeah. yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, I know. That's a storied history. I forgot that you were a prison guard. Yep, prison guard. I heard a lot of occupations in there. <laughs> I, know, <man. laughs> I was like, Damn, I forgot there, about man. that. Well, it's just the, it's the crazy trail people take because you, you have this dream that you want to be, and then for some reason life takes over and you just don't follow it. Right. And, I mean, Circuit City, the, the money made a slave out of you because it was really good money and you really didn't have to do anything. People um, came to you, right? Like, yeah, they people just, came to you and right. it, they paid really, really well. And Circuit City actually made the decision for me. I got licensed in August of 02, didn't do anything with it. And then February 5th, 2003, we went to work and the doors were locked. And we're like, what's going on? They called us in one by one, just read from a script and laid off 8,000 people. Oh, geez. So I walked wow. out and I'm like, I'm a real estate agent. <laughs> <laughs> and what's funny is I went to Owens and Company at the time, went to Owens and Company and Steve Turner was the manager. And I was like, look, I just got laid off. I'm like, I need business. I need money. And he said, well, you need to call your friends and family. I'm like, well, I don't have any family. And all my friends just got laid off. And swear to God, that's what he did. He picked up a phone book. And most people don't know what a phone book is anymore. Picked up a phone book. (laughs) And he handed it to me. He said, start calling. And I sat at that desk in that office from 8 in the morning until 9 at night for days. Just dialing, hi, this is Damien Gutierrez with Owens & Company Realtors. Do you know anybody wants to buy or sell a house? And I did not sell a house, swear to God, until I got to the B's. And there are a lot of A's. In that oh, program. my gosh. <laughs> there are a lot of A's. Yeah. That's just what I did all day long. And it, back then, there weren't dialers or anything like that or, like, call lists or computer lists. It was, like, push button, like, dialing on a telephone. Dang, man. So so you you you, you got uh, thrown in the fire is what it sounds like. Oh, yeah, like. thrown in the fire. <laughs> you didn't have the, the game plan uh, figured out from your, like, 18. I love that kind of story, though, right? Because it wasn't like, you know – dad handed me the business and you know there was a bunch of money sitting in the bank and we you know we had been doing this for 50 years right you know like you had to figure it out well it's one of those things of i admire people that plan things out and do well with it right no yeah. i've never i don't know if i've never had that luxury or never done that i've always had success by failure like i just fail forward like and brett can tell you He'll talk to me like open the business yesterday. <laughs> what did you open? And it's just I mean actually my it's usually <laughs> what now? Good grief, dude. How many irons can you have in one fire? Slow down. Well, it's just making me look bad. It's one of those things of you see an opportunity, you take advantage of the opportunity, and you find someone, hire someone to run that opportunity for you. Right. You know, and that's just what I've always done. It's just find an opportunity, then find somebody to run that opportunity. Right. And then and part of it was I had a business coach years ago that said, you know what your problem is? I said, what's that? He said, you're the worst manager in the world. And I said, why is that? He said, because you're an entrepreneur, and entrepreneurs want to fix something. And every time your business starts running right, you just screw it up. And he said, you screw it up so that you can (laughs) fix it. And so he told me, he said, look, anytime you feel like changing something in this business, real estate, he said, go open another business. And so that's what started happening. And like, I feel like screwing it all up because I'm bored. And so I go open a business and then get those two running. And then when I want to screw with one of them, I go open another business. So who runs mostly your real estate brokerage firm? Like, do you have a COO, like a chief operating officer, somebody that's kind of running the. So I'm the, there. So I show up every day. So I'm there every day in the morning. I show up every morning. I'm the first one there. I'm there. I make sure everything gets set up. And then I'm in my office 
but when I'm in my office, I'm running my businesses. Like my first three hours of the day are dedicated to running a business. Like, and I might touch four or five of them in a day. Right. But as far as running the operation, like I have an ops manager and I have a sales manager. Right, that's what I was getting at. Yeah, yeah. so the ops manager runs the operations, the sales manager runs the sales side, then I just sit there and oversee, and if they questions, they pop in and ask questions or whatnot. Right. Um, but it works really, really well. So when you when you started uh, becoming successful in real estate and said, this is really working, right? Like, um, did you hire any coaches or consultants to kind of help guide you to take you to the next level? Right? I've typically had a coach my entire career of one sort or another. And I always try to find somebody that's, yeah, I'm either a coach or a mastermind group. Right. You yeah. know, like I, if I'm the, if I'm the top dog there, wrong room. Right. I do not want to be in a room where I'm the top dog. Right. You don't want to be educating yeah. everybody else. And, and right. well, it's not that I can't learn. Right. Like, I, you can't I, grow. I, yeah. can't grow. Either if I'm there, I want to be paid to be there and right. I'm educating people. Right. But if I'm not paid to be there and educating people, then I want to pay somebody to educate me. So that's a very mm-hmm. common theme when you look at successful CEOs of uh, companies, multimillionaires, is that they, what he answered, is always has a coach, always has a consultant or somebody that's driving you. That's just, it's like 99% of the time. And then you even hear even like, movie stars like what in the world do they need a coach for they're making you know 10 million dollars a movie like do they really need some yeah they have someone coaching them along as well which is weird because anytime i hear damon talk about coaching you have been a coach for many many years and people pay you top dollar to be a coach for them you've been doing that for a long time so to hear that you continue to have a coach is pretty impressive yeah i've been a coach for probably eight years Um, but I mean, I have a hard time saying that some telling somebody that they need a coach and then I don't have a coach. And so I've always have a coach slash mentor. Well, you know, Brian, who's been a huge mentor for me for years, um, coach mentor, and then different mastermind groups I'm part of. That's, that's good. I mean, you've got to be able to grow to the next level, right? Mm -hmm. I always ask people like, so, you know, what, what, uh, books have you read? What are you doing? I don't know. Nothing really. Well, you're. (laughs) You're never gonna grow, right? You're never, you're never gonna. Well, nobody's gonna push you. If you're not growing, you're dying. And I know it's cliche, but it's it's true. If right. you're not growing, you're dying. You know. And we've learned. Damon and I own a business together, and we've learned that the old adage that um, you have to increase your business by thirty percent every year because you're gonna get thirty percent attrition is absolutely true. Yep. Absolutely yep. true. And I think in any business. So tell me on the real estate uh, broker terms. You got, the, you know, obviously buy and sell residential and commercial real estate. We some, dabble in commercial. Some we specialize in residential. Yeah. So on the investing side, you, I'm assuming you have another LLC that does. Are you doing any wholesaling, flipping? You doing any wholesale, flip, wholesale, uh, buy and hold? <laughs> yeah, that's my jam. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah. So doing a li- little bit of everything. Burrs are awesome because it's not taxable. Right, you can yeah, you, you can pull that money. You want to explain Burr? Yeah, For Burr is buy, buy, renovate, rent, refinance. Right, and the the key word in there is the refinance because loans are not taxed under the current law. Although the yeah. person that is president now wants to change that, but um, <laughs> it could. I mean, he wants to he wants to make it loans taxable. Which I mean, you want to talk about wrecking an economy, wrecking a whole industry. You start making loans taxable. Right. That's that's a problem. Well, it wouldn't just be that industry. It would be. Everything, I mean, the whole insurance industry, yeah, everything, the banks, would, everything would crash. Yeah. Um, so, well, it's, it's kind of interesting because um, the mar- a lot of people think that you can't do that strategy because interest rates are high, higher than they were. Right? Do you think that's still valid? As long as the numbers work, I don't care. Like, right. I don't care what anything costs as long as the numbers work. Right. And everybody gets hung up on on the price of some of something. Either the numbers work or they don't work. And right. when it's on the investment side, the price is reflective of, of, of the numbers. I mean, a house that might have been worth as an investor two hundred thousand at four percent might only be worth one hundred fifty thousand right. at eight percent. Yep. And so, to me, I don't care either the numbers work or they don't, and I get enough opportunities. I just make sure the numbers work. Right. Thank you for watching. Are you ready to take the next step towards a secure retirement or a smooth transition out of your business? Dive deeper into planning your future by visiting our website, and you'll find the link right below in the description. 
You can also check out one of our other videos here on screen now to further increase your financial IQ.